Hey guys, it's Lopal here with another video, and today we're going to be talking about our guide for Senna. Now, this guide's going to be a little bit different since Senna has kind of come out as a new and improved AD carry and support with the new patches that came out on 11.2. So, with these buffs that came in place where your soul stacking is a lot stronger because the soul's frequency in which they spawn is a lot higher, they generate more gold, you get a lot better coefficient on your attack speed, so attack speed items now feel relatively good on the champion, and the adjustment of your crit, so how much crit you get per soul stack and how much crit damage you have went up because of it. We're going to be tackling uh, a lot of different build paths for this as AD carry and support. So the most prominent rune setup that we're going to be running is actually pretty similar in both AD carries and support though. So pretty much for support and AECs, everyone is taking Glacial Augment. Now the reason for this is it just procs on on hit effects and your auto attacks and your Q procs on hit effects also. That means your autoing and queuing both apply slows. Now th what the slows do is allow you to maneuver and position yourself for another auto attack to then stack souls. Plus it enhances your DPS pretty well. So for the most part, most people are just taking Glacial since it just provides a ton of utility and allows you to set up auto queue autos and even hit your snares. So without further ado, let's run into the runes. So after we take our Glacial Augment, we're going to be taking most of the time Stopwatch. The reason for this is a lot of times Senna wants to get boots relatively fast so she can reposition and look for that second auto attack quite frequently. Since also she's relatively immobile and kind of squishy, you usually want your tier 2 upgrades on your boots relatively early just so you can maneuver and dodge skill shots. On top of the fact that Swiftness Boots are really good on this champion, now that Lucidity Boots have been really buffed, you also have the option for that to opt into really early CDR if you want to. So making sure that we don't take the boot rune so we don't gimp ourselves and are unable to buy boots early is really important. After that, for most people, you're going to be taking the Biscuit Delivery. Just because of the fact, as we've said before, we want to be trading quite frequently and stacking our souls, so with trading comes HP and mana loss. Biscuits help supplement this a lot and allow you to continue to pressure in the laning phase. After that, we're going to take Approach Velocity. Now, this rune really ties everything together because it gives you bonus movement speed when approaching people who are slowed. Well, your snare slows people and CCs people, plus your auto and your Q both apply Glacial Augment, so this allows you to gain movement speed while approaching your opponents, allowing you to get extra auto attacks in. It also means that if you are in an advantageous scenario where you're winning a fight, you can continue to chase people down as you're slowing people down and stealing all that movement speed through your passive and this also. After that, the secondary rune page is mostly what you decide you really feel like you need on this champion. For 80 carries, for the most part, you can go into the precision tree and take something like Presence of Mind so we don't run out of mana, and then we can go for the bonus attack speed since we actually get coefficients that are really good on attack speed, or Legends Tenacity if there's a lot of crowd control. Another way to do it too though is if you're a support or maybe more of a caster like champion, so maybe you're doing a different build, which we'll tackle in the future, uh, this is mostly for support. You can take the Sorcery Tree with Mana Flow and Transcendence, just to get more CDR and be able to cycle your spells more frequently. This is less indicated on dealing damage and more on the utility and enchanter-like builds that we'll talk about for especially support in the future. So now that we've tackled what we want to be doing in terms of rune setups, regardless of whether or not we're AD or support, let's first talk about AD carry. Uh, Senna ADC is actually incredibly strong now and is pretty prevalent in the current game state. The reason for this is just because of the fact that he can heal and shield so many different champions with your Q and your ultimate that it makes it very easy for your champions that want to dive in and use things like Gore Drinker to be really enabled. And now that there are new builds and a couple of adjustments on stats, this champion actually deals a lot of damage. Now with the discovery of the Kraken Slayer, with the Rage Blade, we actually can do a lot of damage at two items. So as we've already tackled, right, what we want to be doing is getting our boots and then moving into Kraken Slayer into Rage Blade. The reason why this build is incredibly strong is a couple of things. Number one is, is now that we've increased our coefficient on attack speed, attack speed is actually meaningful stats on Senna. This allows you to reduce the cooldown every time you're auto attacking on your Q. Plus on top of that, because you can auto attack and proc your passive and steal HP, it allows you to maneuver a lot more frequently and kite more easily. Most people are still going Swiftness Boots on it, but I also offer the alternative Lucidity Boots, and even Berserker Greaves are not too bad, but they're a little bit on the greedier side for this champion. 
So Kraken Slayer goes really well with Rage Blade because of how your passive now works. Remember, every 20 souls gives you 10% critical strike, and all these items that you're building also have critical strike built into it. So you build Kraken Slayer because of the fact that it has an on hit effect that's very easy for you to proc. Remember that your Q procs on hit effects. That means if you auto Q and then auto attack, this allows you to cycle your Kraken Slayer very fast. Plus, we're building attack speed, so we're procking the Kraken Slayer quite frequently. After that, we build Rage Blade, and the reason why Rage Blade is so important and ties this build together is because of the fact that it converts all your crit into on hit physical damage. Now remember that every time you get souls, you're also getting crit. This means you have an abnormally escalated amount of critical strike, which allows you to convert this into even more damage. After that, you're pretty much just going to go RFC to get more attack speed and have extra range to harass people at. And then after that, you're looking at things like Last Whisperer and Guardian Angel. This pretty much ties the build together for Senna ADC for the most part, and it's pretty much the prime build that you want to be doing. It converts all of your extra critical strike chances into bonus damage that you just use and leverage by auto attacking quite frequently. The champion scales really, really well too, and basically infinitely because the more souls you stack, the more Rage Blade does. And also another thing to note too is that Rage Blade has a passive built into it that every couple of hits it will then auto proc your on hit effects twice so that makes kraken slayer work really well plus your stealing of movement speed life steal etc is really really potent and that's what makes Senna adc really strong right now is the fact that he can just enable champions that go in plus you now have a damage build that actually does a good amount of damage that's been kind of discovered slash adjusted to since the changes to the coefficients of her stats so let's jump into how do I build this champion support now that we've kind of shown you an AD carry oriented build. Well, for starters, if you play at support and you have enough gold, you can do the exact same build I just showed you. Um, it's completely reasonable to do. It's a lot of damage, but it's very expensive. So it's probably something you only really want to do in terms of a build path if you're getting a lot of kills or you're fighting quite frequently in your games. Maybe if your games last really long and you feel like you need to be a damage threat, this is a completely reasonable build to do. Just know that it costs a lot of money and you're kind of slotted only with four slots instead of five. So you usually not be able to get things like a Guardian Angel or a Bloodthirster or a QSS. These are That's pretty much your luxury item and you'll be guessing getting the four items which is kraken slayer rage blade rapid fire cannon and then your last whisper oriented item moving on though is kind of the traditional old school senna build you can go into armor pen now this armor pen build usually only works if the enemy team has an insane amount of squishies basically there are no tanks or any armor stacking players at all you can go for this build and it makes you very good at kind of dealing a lot of damage at long range at players that are relatively squishy, which is our old traditional build, which is Umbral and Duskblade. Now you can go Umbral before Duskblade if you want division control since it's relatively cheaper, but you need to make sure that you're getting a Duskblade second because we want to make sure that we're getting a mythic item slotted in here. After that, you're going to be still going for the RFC, but you could also, instead of RFC, build Edge of Night if you feel like there's a lot of CC that's coming in that you need to block. Examples of this are things like Blitzcrank Hook, Morgana Binding, Thresh Hook, etc., where the Banshee's Veil like effect gets really good value. And then our last item is just going to be Last Whisperer. I call this the Arbor Pen build. It's pretty much the most niche oriented build, but you can make it work in some cases where there's a lot of squishy champions. This is the build you should probably do the least of any of the builds, though. And then next moving into, as we've kind of talked about, is the enchanter oriented build. So one of the things that also changed when Senna got changed and buffed was that her coefficient on Q for AP got bumped a lot. Plus, as you kind of have already seen, there's a lot of enchanters in the game right now that are building moon, stone, and then staff of flowing water. Well, guess what? This build is available to you too. You actually get really good coefficients on your Q for healing people. So you can actually do this too, where you go something of the sort of Lucidity Boots and you go Moonstone Staff of Flowing Water. This is gonna make you do a considerably less amount of damage, but you'll have a ton of healing, shielding, and utility. I like this build when I play against other enchanters because usually you do about equal healing or even more in some cases than the enchanter, but because you're stacking souls the entire time and actively trading, your damage is still reasonably good and you can pump out a lot of damage as long as you're looking for a good amount of auto attacks. After that, you can go more damage oriented, but usually once you go into the Staff of Flowing Water, you're gonna wanna just continuously stack 
as much healing and utility as possible. So things like Redemption and Ardent Sensor are both really good with this champion too, if you want to go full Enchanter build. Now another option on the table is kind of like a hybrid-like build which is probably the one I've fallen in love with the most and I find the most level of consistency in. So I do go Lucidity Boots and then I build my Moonstone, but after that I'm just going to go full damage. So as we've addressed in the very first build for AD carries of the Kraken Slayer into Rage Blade, afterwards we're getting RFC and then Last Whisperer, we're just going to do that but without Kraken Slayer. So you're going to do a bit less damage, actually a lot less damage, but you'll still be able to convert a lot of your auto attacks into high damage volume and your souls will be gaining really good value. So I go Moonstone into Rage Blade into RFC and then my last item is a Last Whisperer. This allows me to still leverage a considerable amount of healing, especially in longer fights since healing is so prevalent now with my Moonstone and my Q since we're getting a lot of extra AP to heal that. Plus we're getting a ton of ability haste, so it means that you're more of a spellcaster than an auto attacker until you start building towards your second and third item, and then you kind of are a half and half build. I've liked this build a lot that I don't really notice a loss of too much damage, and it's a lot less expensive because we're not buying something like a 3400 gold Kraken Slayer, we're buying just a Moonstone. Um, and I found that this does really well to combat all of the healing that other people have, but still supplement a ton of extra damage. This is my favorite build by, by far, and I feel like it's the most successful that I've had. But there's a bunch of options in terms of what you want to do, just depending on your playstyle and what is going on in the game. Anyway, guys, hope you guys found this guide super helpful, and hopefully you guys are starting to test out Senna and enjoy yourself just like I have. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment in the section below, and hit that bell and whistle. I'll see you next time. Peace.